Okay, so I am a Christian and I am struggling with homosexuality. Or um, also, I guess I should say not or, but um, we're also going to look at um, okay, I am a Christian who you know um, maybe doesn't have uh, partial. Let's just say has partially two partially developed sexual organs. Should I have uh, surgery, or should I stay the, stay the way that I am? And uh, so we're gonna look at those two kind of two topics in, in this advice one. Um, as always, the advice ones I try to keep a little bit shorter. Um, the first thing with overcoming the homosexual lifestyle is is the thing is um, homosexuality kind of is a progressive kind of thing. It starts out with um, maybe feelings or, or thoughts, and then it kind of progresses to where it changes your lifestyle, and it kind of, you know, eventually changes you, where you aren't, I don't want to make this sound weird or anything, but um, the more we live a certain lifestyle, the more that we ourselves are changed, not just our behavior has changed, although that is true, but also our character has changed, um, which is kind of a problem that people have with, with the whole salvation process is, you know, God saves us and he changes us, but then we are still us, but then we are also changed. It's kind of hard to really get into in, in this because that's not really what we're, what we're focusing on, but... Um, and there is that thing where, where it does it do, it is kind of a a, a life dominating thing, um, and what makes it harder is because as a Christian, it, it, you know, it, it's hard enough to know what the Bible says because you know the Bible can be a very difficult book to understand, but then also it's hard because of different churches and uh, you know condoning it, different uh, cultures condoning it. It comes to the thing of well, so is it all just my own personal preference? <laughs> Sorry, my dog's uh, eating. Um, and so let's look at that. Okay, I, I'm a Christian, and, and 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 I know that the Bible says homosexuality is wrong, but I'm still I'm still struggling with this. Um, so the first step is don't give up. Don't give up in any of these things you struggle with. If you're an alcoholic, don't give up in trying to stop being an alcoholic. If you're a drug addict, don't stop you know trying to give up on that. And what we do in our minds is we create. Um, a standard for ourselves like there are some sins that we think are you know not that big of a deal and we can do it but then if somebody else is one of these sins that we deem a worse sin we see them as extremely you know wicked and here's the thing there are different levels of sin okay some sins are worse than others but all sin separates us from God okay like um, for instance Jesus says about people who mislead um, uh, you know, children. You know, it, it, it's necessary that temptation comes. But woe to the person by through whom temptation comes. And he also says, for one who misleads one of my children, it will have been better for a millstone to be uh, uh, tied around his neck and be cast into the sea. He doesn't say that about every sin. So there are definitely uh, different um, sins produce different results. Um, for instance, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is considered the only sin to be. Um, uh, unforgivable. Okay. However, all of the sins equally separate us from God. And what we do is we kind of pick our sins that we like, and then we condone those sins. And then if somebody else is a sin that we don't like, and that's kind of what's happened in the church. People have been cheating on their spouses. They've been looking at pornography. They've been, um, you know, uh, uh, gluttons. They've been lustful and, and, and greedy. You know, they haven't shared. They haven't served other people. And then they want to turn around and say, okay, homosexuals, you guys just need to come out of this. And it's like, well, hold on. Didn't God give you grace? Don't you need to give them grace too? And so there is that. There's that element of, you know, don't give up. It's going to be hard, but don't give up. It, there is, it is possible for a way forward. Now, I will say this. Some Christians, you know, as they seek and as they grow, the homosexual... It'll, homosexuality will just go away. But for a lot of Christians, that won't be a factor. Um, for a lot of Christians, they may struggle with this for their entire life. <laughs> of course, she has to chew the bone now. Um, so the first thing, don't give up. Second, temptations are normal and temptations are persistent. They're going to keep coming back up. But temptations aren't sin. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, was, um, Jesus was tempted to sin. Um... But he's still called sinless. 
So we know that temptation in and of itself is not a sin. Um, temptations will often be, you know, Satan Satan uh, uh, knows how to tempt us with things that we actually want to do. But that doesn't mean that um, the temptation itself is a sin. Um, some things we just enjoy doing more. There are going to be some people that have a really hard time not cheating. There's going to be other people uh, who have a really hard time uh, not doing drugs. Um, I personally have never done drugs, and I don't have any desire to do drugs. But that's not my struggle, you know. Um, so temptations are normal. They are something that everybody goes through. But temptations are not a sin in and of itself. Uh, temptations are something that tempt us to do something wrong. So don't get discouraged by temptations. Um, the Bible says that, that, you know, when you resist the devil, that he will flee from you. So realize that the, the temptations are going to happen. You may, for the rest of your life, be attracted to the same sex. But remember, feelings do not necessitate action. Okay? Um, if I, hypothetically, have feelings for a child, sexual feelings, those feelings do not permit me to take action. Not only because it's not legal, but because it's pretty gross. But assuming for a little bit, okay, e, let's say this child thinks, or I convince this child to think, either or, it doesn't really matter, um, that they love me too, and I convince them that they want to have sex with me too. Does that condone, because it's a two-way thing, we both agreed that we want to have sex with each other. Does that make it okay? Well, no. Right? Now, what about about an animal, for instance, is it okay to have sex with your animal? Well, our animal has, we have a con connection with my dog, so it's okay that we're having sex. It's like, well, no, no, it's not okay. So, you know, temptations will come, and some people we will be tempted to do just things that you think are gross, but to them it's not gross. Um, to someone who's not tempted with homosexuality, someone else who is tempted in homosexuality, they may say, oh, that's gross. And it's not necessarily being homophobic. Homophobic is where you are have an irrational fear of a homosexual person uh, or an irrational, maybe an irrational hate. <clears throat> but to think something is gross is not homophobic. Um, I think it's gross that people would have sex with animals. That doesn't mean that I hate that person. It's just I think that that action is gross. So I think that there needs to be a little bit more um, clarity in the issue itself. But temptations nevertheless will continue probably. Um, don't lessen your heart. You know, Jesus said, you know, uh, without getting too much into Ma into the Gospel of Matthew, uh, he, he clarified that it's not just the act that is wrong, but that act comes from an inner lust, and that lust is actually what's wrong. If you um, hate your brother in your heart, you've already killed, you've already committed murder. You know, there's just this this whole idea that's going on there where it's it's about our heart, and I think that's what's really scary about Christianity is because we can't hide ourselves. From God and, and our innermost thoughts are, are laid bare before Him. He completely sees us as a person, and He still loves us. I think that that's just a very scary idea. Um, so don't lessen your heart. It's easier not to fall to temptation if you're not already, already tempting yourself. Uh, don't marry someone to try and fix yourself. Okay. Sometimes people go to like pray away the gay things, or um, you know, maybe if I marry this person, I'll learn to love them. You're just gonna make life harder on yourself, honestly, genuinely. You see, a lot of people do it, and some people stick with it, I, and I applaud them for that. But it's not gonna fix it. I mean, <laughs> if you don't go into marriage loving the person, there's surprisingly small chances that you will suddenly learn to love them. You can you can do it. You absolutely can do it. But it's just in this kind of a situation, I highly would not recommend it. Um, God probably won't take away your desires. A lot of times people pray, Lord, please take away these desires. Please help me to... Do you know, I was on pornography for years. Over 10 years I was on pornography, and God never once took away my desire for sex. I got married, and I was still on porn. And as much as I tried and prayed, God never took those desires away. See what I mean? And it's oftentimes the same thing with homosexuality, where we think, you know, maybe if I pray hard enough, maybe I do, if I do enough fasts, that's not really how it works. Um, we all have burdens to bear in life, and we all have struggles to, to have to overcome. So um, abstinence is a valid option. Um, I know a lot of times people make it out to be as though if you don't have sex, I mean, you will die. But the truth is, um, blue balls or other things like that, it, it's not, it's not, it's not a life-threatening issue. Um, it's, it, Medically, you are perfectly safe in abstaining. Um, so there's that. 
Uh, also, um, the act of masturbation is not prohibited in scripture. It's the lust that is prohibited. So if, hypothetically, you are able to masturbate without lust, there'd be nothing wrong with that. See what I mean? Um, either way, abstinence is a fully valid option. If you're a Christian, though, it's important to not justify the sin. Well, because I'm having these feelings, that means I can change this, change God's standard. No, no, no. God only made one sexual relationship, and that's the only one that he has validated throughout his word. And that's one man and one woman being joined together. Sometimes we don't have a desire for the opposite sex. That doesn't mean that God's standard has changed. So absence is a valid option, absolutely. Um some people make it out to be as if you don't marry, you know, you're worthless, and that's just not true. Um, Paul himself wasn't married, and you know, he did. He had a great impact on the early church. Um, and then lastly, see God. Put your trust in God. You know, be okay with with having this as a struggle that you have for the rest of your life. Be okay with that. Um, and if it if it is taken from you, well, then good. But if it's not, well, then your trust wasn't in the problem disappearing your trust was in God carrying you through the problem and there was a very big difference in that so then second question here that that I kind of um, didn't really mention too much in my tough topics uh, video about tra transgender is let's say I have both sex organs should I get surgery or should I stay the same say the, say the way that I am well like I walked through the video first genetically what are you then, physically, was there an abnormal development that made you develop other than what your genetics had? In which case, what were the other part? Like, let's say, for instance, you have the XY chromosome, but then your body developed as a female. I hope that I, get, I always get XX and XY confused. You have the male chromosome, but then you develop as a female because, once again, because of the abnormality your body did not produce, right? That did not... Uh, you did not um, develop as you should have. Um, so then you have a, a physical body, everything. You, you have the vagina, obviously not the uterus, but your testicles have not descended, but you still have a slight, uh, you could call it a growth. Um, should you get that growth, that partial penis removed or not? Or should you try and get, you know, treatment? Well, first off, um, this is where feelings come in at. Um If your genetics are abnormal and you developed as a female, I would personally say get the um, penal part removed and keep the vaginal part. But here's the thing, okay? First off, ask yourself a series of questions. What are you genetically? Then second to that, is your appearance congruent with that or is it at odds with that? Um, these are things you just have to kind of um, look at. Objectively, and it's gonna be a little bit difficult because it's you who's struggling with it. Is there a dominant trait? Um, although you have the male male chromosome, you developed as a female. So I mean, well then the female would be the dominant trait, and you have only a slight uh, penal growth, uh, but you still have the vaginal canal and everything. Well then, it seems like you'd want to get the penis removed, but that takes me to my next point: the less invasive the surgery, the better. Get with what hypothetically would have happened but see that's kind of a hard question to answer as well because if you have the male chromosome developed as a female well then you should have developed as a male but yet you're still a female so it's like well and what naturally do you feel like you are now I want I want to kind of note on this I already said multiple times that feelings don't decide our sex you know, we are either male or female. But in the case of an abnormality where you haven't developed properly, did you grow up as a female? And is that natural? Like, is that something or is that something where you're having... See, and here's the thing. You're going to have a little bit of a harder time developing because you aren't an objective person. You are a subjective person. You've been subjected to a abnormality physically. So it's going to be a little bit harder to, to have a clear line. But I do want to say you don't have to get a surgery. You can stay the way that you are, and that's totally okay um, and uh, so then you would just live in abstinence and wouldn't really make make a difference of you know um, what you are now that would be a little bit difficult to do but it is possible to do um, you know there's there's nothing saying that you have to uh, get a surgery
So uh, I, I would say that you it's not necessarily a sin to get a surgery. Um, if you um, if hypothetically you had fully developed male and female, um, which as far as I know hasn't happened, it's um, always a partial thing because there is still the standard of XXXY. Um, but hypothetically, assuming that that happened, um, it seems like that would be a very invasive surgery, and so I would leave it as it is, um, in my opinion. But biblically, um, the Bible really doesn't talk about surgeries and that kind of stuff. So you're in a little bit of a conundrum with that. Um, but usually the answer is the less invasive the surgery, the better. Um, you know, okay, genetically I, I, I was supposed to be a male, but I developed as a female because my body didn't process that like it should have. Um, and so here I am with a physical vagina, but uh, there is a slight bump where the penis should have been. Well, then you could hypothetically get that removed um, to make you more... Um, I, I don't really know what word to use. I don't use the word normal, um, but maybe that would be a better choice of words. So I would say this. Surgery is a lasting thing. Um, I would say do not rush into a surgery. Um, be absolutely assured of who you are um, in Christ, not who the world tells you you are, but who you actually are. And if you feel like your conscience is at ease with it and you feel like it is scientifically what you are, then I don't think that um, there's necessarily anything wrong. But keep in mind, there is also the option of abstinence. Um, if you know you have a physical defect, you don't have to change it. So I, I know that that sounds overly simplified, but sometimes a simplistic answer is a, a good answer sometimes. So um, that's really something that every specific case is going to be a little bit different because abnormalities aren't always all the same. So um, there is that. So.